This is Katya. And this is Maurice. <laughs> Tomorrow will be their last day. They will leave behind hundreds of hours of footage. We were working with about 250 hours of their archive. Um, about 200 of those hours was uh, 16 millimeter footage that Katya and Marie shot, along with just thousands of still photographs that largely Katya shot. Um, and then there was about 50 hours of footage that was, you know, television broadcasts, interviews that they had given through the years. Alone, they could only dream of volcanoes. Together, they can reach them. We actually we read a line in one of the books Maurice wrote, uh, where he says, for me, Katya and volcanoes, it is a love story. And that line now appears at the very end of the film, but for us, that was kind of a, a genesis uh, point. We thought, okay, he's talking about a love triangle, so let's make a film that is a love triangle between Katya and Maurice and volcanoes. That led us uh, to a bunch of different things. One of those things was, um, kind of French New Wave style. <laughs> French New Wave was very much uh, formed the cultural backdrop of uh, you know, the aesthetic movement of when Katia and Maurice themselves were coming of age. Um, and a lot of French New Wave films play with uh, lo love triangles, um, as well as many other things, but, but uh, such as existentialism. Très dur, deux volcanologues qui vivent ensemble. Parce que c'est très volcanique, donc franchement, ça fait des éruptions très souvent. It is an existential watch. You're sitting there thinking about the magnitude of everything, the insignificance of us. For us, we were so mesmerized as we were watching their footage, um, so baffled by the power of this imagery and the fact that Katya and Maurice would get so close to such a dangerous force, um, but they did so with such courage and such pursuit of love and understanding. For us, we couldn't help be drawn in as well. Um, but that did, it, it conjured so many questions for us about kind of the, the place of, of humans amid, you know, the, the vast span of geologic time, as well as how humans understand themselves, uh, how they construct a, a sense of human time with, within kind of the, these um, volcanic forces. Normalement, je l'ai réussi mieux que ça, franchement. Hein. Volcanoes are, there's this like bombastic beauty to volcanoes, and that's going to be present for anyone who sees the film. But there's also a quality that, that, that destruction of volcanoes is a force of, a force, force of creation. And that when we, that there's like death in this world, and that death is what produces life. And that when, when we think about Maurice and Katya's death, you know, I think it was really important for us not to portray that in a, in a mournful way. That they were returning to what they loved and that their legacy they were very they were very sure to to um, create a legacy that would help them live beyond their lives moi j'aime bien qu'il par... qu marche devant moi je me dis si Lucy va se tuer je préfère être avec lui donc the big question that was bugging me all the way through it was how much do they love each other really? <laughs> of course there's tensions in their relationship especially because they were pursuing something so dangerous and beguiling, um, but it was the most important thing to both of them, but they had different methodologies of, of doing so. Um, Katya would joke that, you know, she would follow Maurice more, but often she would say it was because he was actually heavier than her, and so it, if anyone was going to fall in, it would be him first, but then she would follow him because she wanted to die with him. Um, so they had to reconcile death together and what that meant. Um, you know, for Katya, her greatest fear was that Maurice would wander off and she'd never see him again, which he would often do because he was so drawn like a moth to the flame. And for Maurice, his greatest fear is that Katya would be injured and he would not be able to do anything about it. They would be stranded somewhere and she would be in absolute agony and, and he would be helpless and just watch his, his loved, you know, love of his life suffer. That this type of close-up study had to be done. There's a version of love where you love the same things and therefore you love each other. And that's sort of like, there's, there's a superficiality to that in one way, where just like interests make up a relationship. And they certainly had a shared interest, but the love for volcanoes that they both shared also allowed them to be themselves, to, to live the life that they wanted to live, that they needed to live. Mm. And I think like when you recognize that in another, that loving them lets you like be yourself and that loving and that that and that's re uh, reciprocated that's like one of the deepest expressions that we have they will leave
behind hundreds of hours of footage. But there's got to be a modicum of crazy in there too, hasn't there? <laughs> I mean, how crazy were they from all of your research and footage? Yeah, I mean, Katya and Maurice were, would be the first people to say that they were, you know, crazy. But, um, you know, Maurice uh, has a line in, in one of his diaries where he says, my madness knows no bounds. Um, but I think for them, I feel like almost the, the use of the word crazy is more for other people. For them, it was just it was true passion. It was they since they had to reconcile that they could die at any moment um, very early in, in their lives and prayers. They knew what was meaningful to them, and they thought, okay, if I have this amount of time on this planet, if I could go at any second, what do I truly want to do? And so that really kind of crystallized it and focused how they wanted to pursue their life. And it was in this way that you know might be baffling to most people, but for them it was like just the most rational like right and true Just every day yeah. <laughs> and, and I think living that way living authentically in that way if you do it over enough time you start to transition you transform to the other side of selfishness which is what they did mm. where that authenticity lets you see the like splendor of the of the world mm -hmm. and the importance of doing things for others and for people and that was their trajectory of their life too mm. and I don't think they would have come to caring about people and dedicating their life to these early warning systems if they hadn't lived crazily for what they loved and what they cared about. I also like the fact that you foregrounded their sort of how they were in on staging stuff. Yeah, I, we were absolutely in love with how Katya and Reese were excellent storytellers. Yeah. Um, you know, in the film, Reese jokes that, you know, I'm not a filmmaker, I just make films in order to, to wander. Sure. Um, but they absolutely knew what they were doing. Um, and they wanted to be communicators, um, to invite other people into the love that they felt for volcanoes and for the earth. Um, and part of that was kind of this, this playful performativity that um, we had the, the, the fun of, of getting a glimpse into as we were watching their raw rushes. You know, we could really see the many takes of Katya being like, <sighs> This is Katya, and this is Maurice. <laughs> yeah, it was just an amazing opportunity to like comment on documentary for us that documentary is not about representing every fact that exists <laughs> in existence but that is a, is a way to, to impossibly, hopefully, reveal something closer to the truth. The narration, you oh. kind, of, kind of mentioned that, the narration, Miranda July, is that right? So very early on, we knew we wanted narration for the film. A lot of that was because the archival material, despite being so spectacular, was very limited. And we needed some sort of narrative vehicle to tell the story, um, not just kind of relay what happened in their lives, but also to invite a window into their internal worlds, um, as well as to prompt questions. You know, we didn't want uh, some sort of declarative narrator voice that was going to editorialize um, or, you know, provide kind of uh, factual ex exposition for the film. Instead, we wanted a narrator who is just as curious as Katya and Maurice were that could ask these questions that we ourselves were asking. Um, we ended up actually writing a whole backstory <laughs> for our narrator that could help kind of refine the voice. Um, which we never wanted the audience to ever know, but for us it was a really fun exercise. And we were very lucky uh, to have Miranda, an artist whose work we just absolutely admire and have for many, many years, um, be the one to, to voice this material. And she was able to bring out that curiosity, that sense of existentialism, kind of the poignancy and precarity of human relationships just through her, her way, because mm. she's just a phenomenal um, artist. Uh, yeah. So getting to work with her was, was such a joy. In this world lived a fire, and in this fire, two lovers found a home.